Okay, so before anything goes, let's ma oh, I like that. Um, let's make sure we have audio on the play. If somebody could just like deafen themselves, double check that we have sound going. Yep. Perfect. So we're back again because we never really left. Um, today we're going to be doing a Thunderdome Julius Caesar, and it's going to be great fun as we stab people and do things like that. So, without further ado... Good evening, comrades. Welcome to our reading of Julius Caesar. We start, of course, at Act 1, Scene 1, The Street in Rome. Enter Flavius, Marullus, and certain commoners. Hence, home, you idle creatures, get you home. It is a holiday. What? No, you're not. Be mechanical, you ought not. Ought not walk upon a labouring day without the sign of your profession. Speak, what trade art thou? Why, sir, a cup? Where is thy leather apron and thy rule? What dost thou with thy best apparel on? You, sir, what trade are you? Truly, sir, in respect of a fine workman, I am but, as you would say, a cobbler. But what trade art thou? Answer me directly. A trade, sir, that I hope I may use with a safe conscience, which is, indeed, sir, a mender of bad souls. What trade, thou knave, thou naughty knave, what trade? Nay, I beseech you, sir, be not out with me. Yet, if you be out, sir, I can mend you. What meanest thou by that? Mend me, thou saucy fellow. Why, sir, cobble you. Thou art a cobbler, are you? Truly, sir, all that I live by is with the all. I meddle with no tradesmen's matters, nor women's matters, but with all. I am, indeed, sir, a surgeon to old shoes. When they are in great danger, I recover them. As proper men as ever trod me, still ever have gone upon my handiwork. But wherefore art thou not in thy shop today? Why dost thou lead these men about the... Truly, sir, to wear out their shoes, to get myself into more work. But indeed, sir, we make holiday to see Caesar and to rejoice in his triumph. Wherefore rejoice? What conquest brings he home? What tributaries follow him to Rome to grace in captive bonds his chariot wheels? You blocks, you stones, you worse than senseless things! Oh, you hard hearts, you cruel men of Rome! Knew you not Pompeii? Many a time and oft have you climbed up to walls and battlements, to towers and windows, yea, to chimney tops, your infants in your arms, and there have sat the live long day with patient expectation to see great Pompeii pass the streets of Rome. And when you saw his chariot but appear, have you not made an universal shout that Tiber trembled underneath her banks to hear the replication of your sounds made in a concave shores? And do you now put on your best attire, and you now cull out a holiday, and you now strew flowers in his way that comes in triumph over Pompey's blood? Be gone, run to your houses, fall upon your knees, pray to the gods to intermit the plague that needs must light on this ingratitude. Go, go, good countryman, and for this fault, assemble all the poor men of your sort, draw them to Tiber banks and weep your tears into the channel till the lowest stream do kiss the most exalted shores of all. See and whether their base leave. Sorry. <laughs> See whether their bases metal be not moved, they vanish tongue tied in their guil guiltiness. Go you down the way toward the camp. This way will I disrobe the images, if you do not find them decked with ceremony. May we do so? You know it is the feast of Lupercal. It is no matter. Let no images be hung with Caesar's trophies. I'll about and drive you away the vulgar from the street. So, so do you too, where you perceive them thick. These growing feathers plucked from Caesar's wing will make them fly an ordinary pitch. Who else would soar above the view of men and keep us all in servile sift? And they exit. Seen to a public place. There's a flourish. And to Caesar, Antony for the course, Calpurnia, Portia, De Decius Brutus, Cicero, Brutus, Cassius, and Casca, a great crowd following, among them a soothsayer. Calpurnia! Peace, ho! Caesar speaks. Calpurnia! 
Here, my lord. Stand you directly in Antonius's way. Where do you go? Be- He doth run his course and course, Antonius. Caesar, my lord. Forget not in your speed, Antonius, to touch Calpurnia for our elders say the baron touched in this holy chase to shake off their sterile curse. I shall remember. When Caesar says do this, it is performed. Set on, and leave no ceremony out. And there's a flourish. Caesar. Huh? Who calls? Bid every noise be still. Peace yet again. Who is it in the press that calls on me? I hear a tongue shriller than all the music. Cry, Caesar! Speak. Caesar is turned to hear. Beware the Ides of March. What man is that? A soothsayer bids you beware the Ides of March. Let him before me. Let me see his face. Fellow, come from the throng, look upon Caesar. What says thou to me now? Speak once again. Beware the Ides of March. He is a dreamer. Let us leave him pass. All of them leave except Brutus and Cassius. Will you go see the order of the course? Not I. I pray you, do. I am not gamesome. I do lack some part of that quick spirit that is in Antony. Let me not hinder, Cassius, your desires. I'll leave you. Brutus, I do observe you now of late. I have not from your eyes that gentleness and show of love as I was wont to have. You bear too stubborn and too strange a hand over your friend that loves you. Cassius, be not deceived. If I have veiled my look, I turn the trouble of my countenance merely upon myself. Vexed I am, of late with passions of some difference, conceptions only proper to myself, which give some soil, perhaps, to my behaviours. But let not, therefore, my good friends be grieved, among which number, Cassius, be you one, nor construe any further my neglect that poor Brutus, with himself at war, forgets the shows of love to other men. Then... Brutus, I have much mistook your passion. By means whereof this breast of mine hath buried, thoughts of great value, worthy cogitations. Tell me, good Brutus, can you see your face? No, Cassius, for the eye sees sees not itself, but by reflection by some other things. Tis just, and it is very much lamented, Brutus, that you have no such mirrors as will turn your hidden worthiness into your eye, that you might see your shadow. I have heard where many of the best respect in Rome, except immortal Caesar, speaking of Brutus and groaning underneath this age's yoke, have wished that noble Brutus had his eyes. Into what dangers would you lead me, Cassius, that you would have me seek into myself for that which is not in me? Therefore, good Brutus, be prepared to hear, and since you know you cannot see yourself so well as by reflection, I, your glass, will modestly discover to yourself that of yourself which you yet know not of. And be not jealous on me, gentle Brutus. Were I a common laughter, or did use to stale with ordinary oaths my love to every new protester, if you know that I do fawn on men and hug them hard, and after scandal of them, or if you know that I profess myself in banqueting, to all the rout, then hold me dangerous. A flourish and a shout. What means this shouting? I do fear the people choose Caesar for their king. Aye, do you fear it? Then must I think you would not have it so? I would not, Cassius. Yet I love him well. But wherefore do you hold me here so long? What is it that you would impart to me? If it be aught toward the general good, set honour in one eye and death in the other, and I will look on both indifferently for let the gods so speed me as i love the name of honor more than i fear death i know that virtue to be in you brutus as well as i do know your outward favor well honor is the subject of my story i cannot tell what you and other men think of this life but for my single self i had as life not be as lived to be 
in awe of such a thing as I myself. I was born free as Caesar. So were you. We both have fed as well, and we can both endure the winter's cold as well as heat. For once upon a raw and gusty day, the troubled hyper chafing with her shores. Caesar said to me, Darest thou, Cassius, now leap in with me into this angry flood and swim to yonder point? Upon the word, accoutred as I was, I plunged in and bade him follow, so indeed he did. The torrent roared and we did buffet it, with lusty sinews throwing it aside and stemming it with hearts of controversy. But ere we could arrive the point proposed, Caesar cried, Help me, Cassius, or I sink! I, as Aeneas, our great ancestor, did from the flames of Troy upon his shoulder the old Anchises bear, so from the waves of Tiber did I the tired Caesar. And this man is now become a god, and Cassius is a wretched creature, and must bend his body, if Caesar carelessly but not on him. He had a fever when he was in Spain. And when the fit was on him, I did mark how he did shake. Tis true, this god did shake. His coward lips did from their colour fly. And that same eye whose bend doth all the world did lose his lustre. I did hear him groan. Hi, that tongue of his that bade the Romans mark him and write his speeches in their books. Alas, it cried, give me some drink to Tinius, as a sick girl. Ye gods, it doth amaze me. A man of such feeble temper should so get the start of the majestic world and bear the palm alone. A shout and another flourish. Another general shout. I do believe that these applauses are for some new honours that are heaped on Caesar. Why, man, he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus, and we petty men walk under his huge legs and peep about to find ourselves dishonourable graves. Men at some time are masters of their fates. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, that we are underlings. Brutus and Caesar. What should be in that Caesar? Why should that name be sounded more than yours? Write them together. Yours is as fair a name. Sound them, it doth become the mouth as well. Weigh them, it is as heavy. Conjure with them. Brutus will start a spirit as soon as Caesar. Now, in the names of all the gods at once, upon what meat doth this our Caesar feed, that he is grown so great? Age, thou art shamed. Rome, thou hast lost the breed of noble bloods. When went there by an age since the great floods, but it was famed with more than one man? When could they say till now that talked of Rome, that her wide walls encompassed but one man? Now is it Rome indeed, and room enough, but there is in it but only one man. Oh, you and I have heard our fathers say there was a Brutus once that would have brooked the internal e devil to keep his state in Rome as easily as a king. That you do love me, I am nothing jealous. What you would work me to, I have some aim. How I have thought of this and of these times, I shall recount hereafter. For this present, I would not, so with love I might entreat you, be any further moved. What you have said, I will consider. What you have to say, I will with patience hear, and find a time both meet to hear and answer such high things. Till then, my noble friend, chew upon this. Brutus had rather be a villager than to repute himself a son of Rome under these hard conditions as this time is like to lay upon us. I am glad that my weak words have struck but thus much show of fire from Brutus. The games are done, and Caesar is returning. As they pass by, pluck Casca by the sleeve, and he will, after his sorry fashion, tell you what hath preceded, worthy note today. Re enter Caesar and his train. I will do so. But look you, Cassius, the angry spot doth glow on Caesar's brow, and all the rest look like a chidden train. Calparina's cheek is pale, and Cicero looks with such ferret and such fiery eyes as we have seen him in the capital, being crossed in conference by some senators. Casca will tell us what the matter is. Antonius! Caesar? Let me have men about me that are fat! Sleek-headed men, and such as sleep a night. Young Cassius, 
had a lean and hungry look. He thinks too much. Such men are dangerous. Fear him not, Caesar. He is not dangerous. He is a noble Roman and well given. Would he were fatter? But I fear him not. Yet, if my name were liable to fear, I do not know the man I should avoid so soon as that spare Cassius. He reads much. He is a great observer and he looks quite through the deeds of men. He loves no place as thou does, Antony. He hears no music. Seldom he smiles and smiles in such as the sort as if he mocked himself and scorned his spirit that could be moved to smile at anything. Such men as he be never at heart is, whilst they behold a greater than themselves and therefore are they, are, are they very dangerous. I rather tell thee what is to be feared that what I fear, for always I am Caesar. Come on my right hand, for this ear is deaf, and tell me truly what thou thinkst of him. Exit Caesar and all of his train, except Casca. You pulled me by the cloak, would you speak with me? Aye, Casca, tell us what hath chanced today that Caesar looks so sad. Why, you were with him, were you not? I should not then ask Casca what had chanced. Why, there was a crown offered him, and being offered him, he put it by with the back of his hand, thus, and then the people fell a-shouting. Uh, what was the second noise for? Why, for that, too. They shouted thrice. What was the last cry for? Why, for that, too. Was the crown offered him thrice? Ay, Mary, was. And he put it by thrice, every time gentler than other. And at every putting by, my honest neighbours shouted. Who offered him the crown? Why, Antony. Tell us the manner of it, gentle Casca. I can as well be hanged as tell the manner of it. It was mere foolery. I did not mark it. I saw Mark Antony offer him a crown, yet t'was not a crown, neither. T'was one of these coronets. And, as I told you, he put it by once. But for all that, to my thinking, he would fain have had it. Then he offered it to him again, then he put it by again, but to my thinking he was very loath to lay his fingers off it. And then he offered it the third time, he put it the third time by, and still as he refused it the rabblemen hooted, and clapped their chapped hands, and threw up their sweaty nightcaps, and uttered such a deal of stinking breath because Caesar refused the crown that it had almost choked Caesar. For he swounded, and fell down at it, and for mine own part I durst not laugh for fear of opening my lips and receiving the bad air. But, soft, I pray you, what did Caesar swound? He fell down in the marketplace, and foamed at the mouth, and was speechless. Tis very like, he hath the failing sickness. No, Caesar hath it not, but you and I, and honest Casca, we have the falling sickness. I know not what you mean by that, but I am sure Caesar fell down. If the Tagrag people did not clap him and hiss him according as he pleased and displeased them, as they used to do the players in the theatre, I am no true. What said he when he came unto himself? Mary, before he fell down, when he had perceived the common herd, was glad he refused the crown. He plucked me up his doublet and offered them his throat to cut. And I had been a man of any occupation, if I would not have taken him at a word. I would I might go to hell among the roads. And so he fell. When he came to himself again, he said if he had done or said anything amiss, he desired their worships to think it was his infirmity. Three or four wenches where I stood cried, Alas, good soul, and forgave him with all their hearts, but there's no heed to be taken of them. If Caesar had stabbed their mothers, they would have done no less. And after that he came, thus sad away? Aye. Did Cicero say anything? Aye. He spoke Greek. To what effect? Nay, and I'll tell you that. I'll ne'er look you in the, in the face again. But those that understood him smiled at one another and shook their heads. But for mine own part, it was Greek to me. I could tell you more news, too. Marlus and Flavius, for pulling scarfs off Caesar's images, are put to silence. Very well. There was more foolery yet, if I could remember it. Will you sup with me tonight, Casca? No, I'm promised forth. Will you dine with me tomorrow? 
Aye, if I be alive and your mind hold and your dinner worth the eating. Good. I will expect you. Do so. Farewell, both. What a blunt fellow is this grown to be. He was quick metal when he was in school. So is he now an execution of any bold or noble enterprise. However, he puts on this tardy form, this rudeness is a sauce to his good wit, which gives men's stomach to digest his words with better appetite. And so it is. For this time, I will leave you. Tomorrow, if you please to speak with me, I will come home to you, or, if you will, come home to me, and I will wait for you. I will do so. Till then, think of the world. And Brutus exits. Well, Brutus, thou art noble, yet I see thy honourable metal may be wrought from that it is disposed. Therefore it is meet that noble minds keep ever with their likes. For who so firm that cannot be seduced? Caesar doth bear me hard, but he loves Brutus. If I were Brutus now and he were Cassius, he should not humour me. I will this night in several hands in at his windows throw, as if they came from several citizens, writings all tending to the great opinion that Rome holds of his name, wherein, obscurely, Caesar's ambition shall be glanced at. And after this, let Caesar seat him, sure, for we will shake him, or worse days endure. And Cassius exits, which brings us to Act 1, Scene 3, the same, the street in Rome, thunder and lightning, Enter from op opposite sides, Casca with his sword drawn, and Cicero. Good even, Casca. Brought you Caesar home? Why are you breathless, and why stare you so? Are you not moved, when all the sway of earth shakes like a thing unfirm? Oh, Cicero, I have seen tempests, where the scolding winds have writhed the naughty oaks, and I have seen the ambitious ocean swell and rage and foam to be exalted with threatening clouds. But never till tonight, never till now, did I go through a tempest dropping fire. Either there is a civil strife in heaven, or else a world too saucy with the gods and senses them to send destruction. Why, saw you anything more wonderful? A common slave, you know him well by sight, held up his left hand, which did flame and burn like twenty torches joined and that his hand, not sensible of fire, remained unscorched. Besides, I had not put up my sword. Against the capital I met a lion, who glared upon me and went surly by, without annoying me. And there were drawn upon a heap of a hundred ghastly women, transformed with their fear, who swore they saw men all in fire walk up and down the streets. And yesterday the bird of night did sit, even at noonday, upon the marketplace, hooting and shrieking. What these prodigies do so conjointly meet, let not men say, these are their reasons, they are natural, for I believe they are portentous things unto the climate that they pour. Indeed, it is a strange disposed time, but men may construe things after their fashion, clean from the purpose of the things themselves. Come see to the capital tomorrow. He doth, for he did bid Antonius send word to you, he will be there. Good night, then, Casca, this disturbed sky is not to walk in. Farewell, Cicero. And Cicero leaves. Cassius enters. Who's there? A Roman. Casca, by your voice. Your air is good. Cassius, what night is this? A very pleasing night to honest men. Whoever knew the heavens men as so? Those that have known the earth so full of faults. For my part, I have walked about the streets, submitting me unto the perilous night. And thus unbraced, Casca, as you see, have bared my bosom to the thunderstone. And when the cross-blue lightning seemed to open the breast of heaven, I did present myself, even in the aim and very flash of it. But wherefore did you so much to tempt the heavens? Is it the part of men to fear and tremble when the most mighty gods by token send such dreadful heralds to astonish? You are dull, Casca. And those sparks of life that should be in a Roman, you do want, or else you use not. You look pale and gaze, and put on fear, and cast yourself in wonder, to see the strange impatience of the heavens. But 
if you would consider the true cause why all these fires, why all these gliding ghosts, why bird and beasts from quality and kind, why old men fool and children calculate, why all these things change from their ordinance, their natures and performed faculties, to monstrous quality. Why you shall find that heaven hath infused them with these spirits to make them instruments of fear and warning and to some monstrous state. Now could I, Casca, name to thee a man most like this dreadful night that thunders, lightens, opens graves and roars as doth the lion in the capital? A man no mightier than thyself or me in personal action, yet prodigious grown and fearful as these strange eruptions are. "'Tis Caesar that you mean, is it not, Cassius?" "'Let it be who it is, for Romans now have thews and limbs like their ancestors. But, woe the while, our fathers' minds are dead, and we are governed with our mothers' spirits. Our yoke and sufferance show us womanish." "'Indeed. They say the senators tomorrow mean to establish Caesar as a king, and he shall wear his crown by sea and land in every place save here in Italy. I know where I will wear this dagger, then. Cassius from bondage will deliver Cassius. Therein, ye gods, you make the weak most strong. Therein, ye gods, you tyrants do defeat. Nor stony tower, nor walls of beaten brass, nor airless dungeon, nor strong links of iron can be retentive to the strength of spirit. But life, being wary of these worldly bars, never lacks power to dismiss itself. If I know this, Know all the world besides, that part of tyranny that I do bear, I can shake off at pleasure. In the background, we can still hear the thunder. So can I. So every bondman in his own hand bears the power to cancel his captivity. And why should Caesar be a tyrant then? Poor man, I know he would not be a wolf, but that he sees the Romans are but sheep. He were no lion, were not Romans' hinds. Those that with haste will make a mighty fire begin it with weak straws. What trash is Rome, what rubbish, and what awful when it serves for the base matter to illuminate so vile a thing as Caesar? But, oh, grief, where hast thou led me? I perhaps speak this before a willing bondman, then I know my answer must be made. But I am armed, and dangers are to me indifferent. You speak to Casca, and to such a man there is no fear in telltale. Hold, my hand. Be factious for redress of all these griefs, and I will set this foot of mine as far as who goes farthest. There's a bargain made. Now know you, Casca, I have moved already. Some certain of the noblest-minded Romans to undergo with me an enterprise of honourable, dangerous consequence. And I do know by this they stay for me in Pompey's porch. For now, this fearful night, there is no stir or walking in the streets, and the complexion of the element in favours like the work we have in hand, most bloody, fiery, and most terrible. Stand close a while, for here comes one in haste. Tis Cinna, I do know him by his gait. He is a friend. And to Cinna. Cinna. Where haste you so? Find out you. Who's that? Metellus Simber? No, it is Casca, one incorporate to our attempts. Am I not stayed for, Cinna? Glad on it. What a fearful night is this. There's two or three of us have seen strange sights. Am I not stayed for? Tell me. Yes, you are. O oh, Cassius, if you could, but win the noble Brutus to our party. Be you content, good Cinna. Take this paper, and look you lay it in the praetor's chair, where Brutus may but find it, and throw this in at his window. Set this up with wax upon old Brutus's statue. All this done, repair to Pompey's porch, where you shall find us. Is Decius Brutus and Trebonius there? But Metellus Simber, and he's gone to seek you at your house. Well, I will hie, and so bestow these papers as you bade me. That done, repair to Pompey's theatre. And Senna leaves. Come, Casca, you and I will yet ere day see Brutus at his house, 
three parts of him is all already, and the man entire upon the next encounter yields him ours. Oh, he sits high in all the people's hearts, and that which would appear offense in us, his countenance like richest alchemy will change to virtue and to worthiness. Him and his worth, and our great need of him, you have right well conceded. Let us go, for it is after midnight and ere day we will awake him and be sure of him. And they exit, which brings us to Act 2, Scene 1, in Rome, Brutus's orchard. Enter Brutus. What, Lucius, ho! I cannot, by the progress of the stars, give guess how near to day. Lucius, I say, I would it were my fault to sleep so soundly. When, Lucius, when? Awake, I say. What, Lucius? Enter Lucius. Call you, my lord. Get me a taper in my study, Lucius. When it is lighted, come and call me here. I will, my lord. And Lucius exits. It must be by his death. And for my part, I know no personal cause to spurn him, but for the general. He would be crowned. How that might change his nature, there's the question. It is the bright day that brings forth the adder, and that craves wary walking. Crown him that, and then, I grant, we put a sting in him, that at his will he may do danger with. The abuse of greatness is when it disjoins remorse from power, and, to speak truth of Caesar, I have not known when his affections swayed more than his reason. But it is common proof that loneliness is young ambition's ladder, whereto the climber upward turns his face, but when he once attains the utmost round, he then unto the ladder turns his back, looks in the clouds, scorning the base degrees by which he did ascend. So Caesar may, <coughs> so Caesar may, then, lest he may, prevent. And since the quarrel will bear no colour for the thing he is, fashion it thus, that what he is, augmented, will run to these and these extremities, and therefore think him as a serpent's egg, which, hatched, would, as his kind, grow mischievous, and kill him in the shell. And Lucius re-enters. The taper burneth in your closet, sir. Searching the window for a flint, I found this paper thus sealed up, and I am sure it did not lie there when I went. And Lucius hands Brutus the letter. Get you to bear again. It is not day. It is not tomorrow, boy. The Ides of March? I know not, sir. Look in the calendar and bring me word. I will, sir. And Lysias exit. The exhalations whizzing in the air give so much light that I may read by them. He opens the letter and begins to read. Brutus, thou sleepst. Awake and see thyself. Shall roam, etc. Speak, strike, redress. Brutus, thou sleepst. Awake. Such instigations have oft been dropped when I have took them up. Shall Rome, etc. Thus must I piece it out. Shall Rome stand under one man's oar? What, Rome? My ancestors did from the streets of Rome the Tarquin drive when he was called a king. Speak, strike, redress. Am I entreated to speak and strike? O oh, Rome, I make thee promise, if the redress will follow, thou receivest thy full petition at the hands of Brutus. And Lucius re-enters once again. Sir, March is wasted for you, days. There's a knocking within. Tis good. Go to the gate, somebody knocks. Lucius leaves. Since Cassius first did wet me against Caesar, I have not slept. Between the acting of a dreadful thing and the first motion, all the interim is like a phantasma or a hideous dream. The genius and the mortal instruments are then in council, and the state of man, like to a little kingdom, suffers then the nature of an insurrection. Lucius enters once more. Sir, tis your brother Cassius at the door, who doth desire to see you. Is he alone? No, sir. There are both with him. Do you know them? No, sir. The hats are plucked about their ears, and half the faces are buried in their cloaks, that by no means I may discover them, 
by any mark of faith. Let him enter. And Lucius leaves. They are the faction. O oh, conspiracy, shamest thou to show thy dangerous brow by night when evils are most free? Oh, then by day, where wilt thou find a cavern dark enough to mask thy monstrous visage? Seek none, conspiracy, hide it in smiles and affability. For if thou path thy native semblance on, not Erebus itself were dim enough to hide thee from prevention. And to the conspirators. Cassius, Casca, Decius, Brutus, Cinna, Metellus, Simba, and Tribonius. I think we are too bold upon your rest. Good morrow, Brutus. Do we trouble you? I have been up this hour, awake all night. Know I these men who come along with you? Yes, every man of them, and no man here, but honours you. And every one doth wish you had, but that opinion of yourself which every noble Roman bears of you. This is Tribonius. He is welcome hither. This, Decius Brutus. He is welcome too. This, Casca, this Cinna, and this, Metellus Simba. They are all welcome. What watchful cares do interpose themselves betwixt your eyes and night? Shall I entreat a word? Brutus and Cassius whisper. <laughs> lies the east. Doth not the day break here? No. Pardon, sir, it doth. And beyond grey lines that fret the clouds are messengers of day. You shall confess that you are both deceived. Here, as I point my sword, the sun arises, which is a great way growing on the south, weighing the youthful season of the year. Some two months hence, up higher toward the north, he first presents his fire, and the high east stands as the capital directly here. Give me your hands all over, one by one. And let us swear our resolution. No, not an oath. If not the face of men, the sufferance of our souls, the time's abuse, if these be motives weak, break off betimes, and every man hence to his idle bed. So let high-sighted tyranny range on, till each man drop by lottery. But if these as I am sure they do, bear fire enough to kindle cowards, and to steal with valour the melting spirits of women. Then, countrymen, what need we any spur but our own cause to prick us to redress? What other bond than secret Romans that have spoke the word that will not palter? And what other oath than honesty to honesty engage that this shall be, or we will fall for it? Swear priests and cowards and men courtless old feeble carrions, and such suffering souls that welcome wrongs. Unto bad causes swear such creatures as men doubt, but do not stain the even virtue of our enterprise, nor the insuppressive metal of our spirits, to think that our cause or our performance did need an oath, when every drop of blood that every Roman bears, and nobly bears, is guilty of a several bastardy, if he do break the smallest particle of any promise that hath passed from him. But what of Cicero? Shall we sound him? I think he will stand very strong with us. Let us not leave him out. Oh, by no means. Oh, let us have him, for his silver hairs will purchase us a good opinion, and by men's voices to commend our deeds. It shall be said his judgment ruled our hands, our youths, and wildness shall no whit appear, but all be buried in his gravity. Oh, name him not. Let us not break with him, for he will never follow anything that other men begin. Then leave him out. Indeed, he is not fit. No man else be touched but only Caesar? Decius, well urged, I think it is not meet. Mark Antony, so well beloved of Caesar, shall outlive Caesar. We shall find of him a shrewd contriver, and you know his means. If he improves them, may well stretch so far as to annoy us all. Which to prevent, let Antony and Caesar fall together. Our course will seem too bloody, Caius Cassius, to cut their head off and then hack the limbs like wrath in death and envy afterwards. For Antony is but a limb of Caesar, 
Let us be sacrificers, but not butchers, Caius. We all stand up against the spirit of Caesar, and in the spirit of men there is no blood. Oh, that we could come by Caesar's spirit and not dismember Caesar. But alas, Caesar must bleed for it. And, gentle friends, let's kill him boldly, but not wrathfully. Let's carve him as a dish fit for the gods, not hew him as a carcass fit for hounds. And let our hearts, as subtle masters do, stir up their servants to an act of rage, and after seem to chide him. This shall make our purpose necessary and not envious, which, so appearing to the common eyes, we shall be called purgers, not murderers. And for Mark Antony, think not of him, for he can do no more than Caesar's arm when Caesar's head is off. Yet I fear him, for in the engrafted love he bears to Caesar. Alas, good Cassius, do not think of him. If he loves Caesar, all that he can do is to himself take thought and die for Caesar. And that were much he should, for he is given to sports, to wildness, and much company. There is no fear in him. Let him not die, for he will live and laugh at this hereafter. A clock strikes. Peace. Count the clock. The clock hath stricken three. It is time to part. But it is doubtful yet whether Cecil will come forth today or no, for he is superstitious grown of late. Quite from the main opinion he held once, of fantasy, of dreams and ceremonies. It may be these apparent prodigies, the unaccustomed terror of this night, and the persuasion of his augurers may hold him from the capital today. Never fear that. If he be so resolved, I can o'er sway him. For he loves to hear that unicorns may be betrayed with trees, and bears with glasses, elephants with holes, lions with toils, and men with flatterers. But when I tell him he hates flatterers, he says he does, being then most flattered. Let me work, for I can give his humor the true bent, and I will bring him to the capital. Nay, we will all of us be there to fetch him. By the eighth hour, is that the uttermost? That the uttermost, and fail not then. Caius Ligarius doth bear Caesar hard, who rated him for speaking well of Pompey. I wonder none of you have thought of him. Now, good Metellus, go along by him. He loves me well, and I have given him reasons. Send him but hither, and I'll fashion him. The morning comes upon us. We'll leave you, Brutus. And friends, disperse yourself, but all remember what you have said, and show yourselves true Romans. Good gentlemen, look fresh and merrily. Let not our looks put on our purposes, but bear it as our Roman actors do, with untied spirits and formal constancy. And so good morrow to every one of you. And all of them except Brutus leave. Boy, Lucius, fast asleep, it is no matter. Enjoy the honey-heavy dew of slumber. Thou hast no figures, nor no fantasies, which busy care draws in the brains of men. Therefore, thou sleepest so sound. And Portia enters. Brutus, my lord. Portia, what mean you? Wherefore you rise now? Is it not for your? It is not for your health thus to commit your weak condition to the raw, cold morning. Nor for yours neither. You've earned gently. Brutus stole from my bed, and yesterday night at supper you suddenly arose and walked about, musing and sighing with your arms across, and when I asked you what the matter was, you stared upon me with ungentle looks. I urged you further, then you scratched your head, and too impatiently stamped with your foot. Yet I insisted, yet you answered not. But with an angry wafture of your hand, you gave, gave sign to me to leave you. So I did. Fearing to strengthen that impatience which seemed too much enkindled, and we folk hoping it was but an effect of humor, which sometime hath his, uh, his hour of every man. It will not let you eat, nor talk, nor sleep, and could it work so much upon your ship as it hath much prevailed on your condition, I should not know you, Brutus. Dear my lord, 
Make me acquainted with your cause of grief. I am not well in health, and that is all. Brutus is wise, and were he not in health, he would embrace the means to come by it. Why, so I do. Good Portia, go to bed. Is Brutus sick? And is it physical to walk, embrace, and suck up the humours of the dank morning? <laughs> what, is Brutus sick? And will he steal out of his wholesome bed to dare the vile contagion of the night and tend the roomy and unpurged air to add unto his sickness? No, my Brutus, you have some sick offence with your, within your mind, which by the right and the virtue of my place I ought to know of. And upon my knees, I charm you by my once commended beauty, by all your vows of love, and that great vow which did incorporate and make us one that you told to, that you unfold to me, yourself, your half, why you are heavy, and what men tonight have had to resort to you. For you have been some six or seven who did hide their faces, even from darkness. Kneel not, gentle Portia. I should not need, if you were gentle Brutus. Within the bond of marriage, tell me, Brutus, is it exceeded I should know no secrets that are pertinent to you? Am I yourself, but as it were, in sort of, in sort of limitation, to keep with you at meals, comfort your bed, and talk to you sometimes? Dwell I but in the suburbs of your good pleasure. If it be no more, Portia is Brutus Harlot, not his wife. You are my true and honourable wife, as dear to me as are the ruddy drops that visit my sad heart. If this were true, then should I know this secret? I grant I am a woman, but withal a woman that Lord Brutus took to wife. I grant I am a woman, but withal, a woman will repeat it. Cato's daughter, think you I am no stronger than my sex, being so fathered and so husbanded? Tell me your counsels, I will not disclose them. I have made strong proof of my constancy, giving myself a voluntary wound here in the thigh. Can I bear with that of patience and not my husband's secrets? Oh, ye gods. Render me worthy of this noble wife. There is a knocking within. Hark, hark, one knocks. Portia, go in a while, and by and by thy bosom shall partake the secrets of my heart. All my engagements I will construe to thee, all the character of my sad brows leave me with haste. And Portia leaves. Lucius, who's that knocks? Re-enter Lucius with Megarius. He's a sick man that would speak with you. Caius Ligarius, uh, that Metellus spoke of. Boy, stand aside. Caius Ligarius, how? First say good morrow from a feeble, feeble tongue. Oh, what a time have you chose out, brave Caius, to wear a kerchief. Would you were not sick? I am not sick if Brutus have in, my, have in hand any exploit worthy the name of honour. Such an exploit I have in hand, Ligarius, had you a ha had you a healthful ear to hear of it. By all the gods that Romans bow before, here I discard my sickness. Soul of Rome, brave son derived from honourable loins, my mortified spirit, now bid me run, and I will strive with things impossible, yea, get the better of them. What's to do? A piece of work that will make sick men whole. But are that some whole that we must make sick? That must we also. What is it, my Caius? I shall unfold to thee as we are going to whom it must be done. Sit on your foot, and with a heart new fired I follow you. To do I know not. What? But if Sophie uh, said that Brutus leads me on. Follow me then. And they leave. Which brings us to Act 2, Scene 2, Caesar's house. Thunder and lightning enter Caesar in his nightgown. All heaven nor earth have been at peace tonight. 
Price, half Calpurnia in her sleep, cried out, Help! Ho! They murder Caesar! Who's within? A servant enters. My lord. Go bid the priest do present sacrifice and bring me their opinions of, suc of success. I will, my lord. And they accept. Enter Calpurnia. What mean you, Caesar? Think you to walk forth? You shall not stir out of your house today. Caesar shall forth. The things that threaten me near looked but on my back. When they shall see the face of Caesar, they are vanished. Caesar, I never stood on ceremonies, yet now they fright me. There is one within besides the things that we have heard and seen. Recounts most horrid sights seen by the watch. A lioness hath whelped in the streets, and graves have yawned and yielded up their dead. Fierce, fiery warriors fought upon the clouds, in ranks and squadrons and right form, which drizzled blood upon the capital. The noise of battle hurtled in the air, horses did neigh, and dying men did groan. The ghosts did shriek and squeal about the streets. Caesar, these things are all are beyond all use. I do fear them. Oh, sorry. What can be avoided, whose end is purposed by the mighty gods? Yet Caesar shall go forth, for these predictions are to the world in general as to Caesar. When beggars die, there are no comets seen. The heavens themselves blaze forth the death of princes. Cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. Of all the wonders that I yet have heard, it seems to me the most strange that men should fear, seeing that death, a necessary end, will come when it will come. And the servant re-enters. What say the augurers? They would not have you to stir forth today. Uh, plucking the entrails of an offering forth, they could not find a heart within the beast. The gods should do this in shame of cowardice. Caesar shall be a beast without a heart. If he should stay at home today for fear. No, Caesar shall not. Danger knows full well that Caesar is more dangerous than he. We are two lions littered in one day, and I the elder and more terrible, and Caesar shall go forth. Alas, my lord, wisdom is consumed in confidence. Do not go forth today. Call it my fear that keeps you in the house and not your own. We'll send Mark Antony to the Senate house, and he shall say that you are not well today. Let me, upon my knee, prevail in this. Mark Antony shall say I am not well, and, for thy humour, I will stay at home. And Decius Brutus enters. Is Decius Brutus. He shall tell them so. Caesar, all hail. Good morrow, worthy Caesar. I come to fetch you to the Senate House. And you are come in very happy time to bear my greeting to the senators and tell them that I will not come today, cannot, is false. And that I dare not fall, sir, I will not come today. Tell them so, Decius. Say he's sick. Will Caesar send a lie? Have I in conquest? Stretch mine arm so far to be afraid to tell Greybeards the truth. Tell them that Caesar will not come. Most mighty Caesar, let me know some cause, lest I be laughed at when I tell them so. The cause is my will. I will not come. That is enough to satisfy the Senate. But for your private satisfaction, because I love you, I will let you know. Calpurnia here, my wife, Stays me at home. She dreamt tonight she saw my statua. 
which like a fountain with a hundred spouts did run pure blood and many lusty Romans came smiling and did bathe their hands in it. And these those she apply for warnings are important and evils imminent. And on her knee hath begged that I will stay at home today. Game is all a misinterpreted. It was a vision fair and fortunate. Your statue spouting blood in many pipes, in which so many smiling Romans bathed, signifies that from you great Rome shall suck reviving blood, and that great men shall press for tinctures, stains, relics, and cognizance. This, by Calpurnia's dream, is signified. This way have you well expounded it. Have. When you have heard what I can say, and know it now, the Senate hath concluded to give this day a crowd to mighty Caesar. If you shall send them word you will not come, their minds may change. Besides, it were a mock act to be rendered, for someone to say, Break up the Senate till another time, when Caesar's wife shall meet with better dreams. If Caesar hide himself, shall they not whisper, Lo, is Caesar afraid? Pardon me, Caesar, for my dear, dear love to our preceding bids, tell me tell you this, and my reason to love is liable. How foolish do your fears seem now, Calpurnia. I am ashamed that I did yield to them. Give, my, uh, give me my robe, for I will go. And to Publius, Brutus, Ligar Ligarius, Metellus, Casca, Trebonius, and Cinna. And look where Publius is, is come to fetch me. Good morrow, Caesar. Welcome, Publius. What, Brutus, are you stirred so early too? Good morrow, Casca, Caius Ligarius. Caesar was ne'er so much your enemy as the same egg which has made you lean. What is to clock? Caesar, tis struck an eight. I thank you for your pains and courtesy. See. Si. Enter Antony. See. Si. Antony that revolves long o' nights is not with with standing up. Good morrow, Antony. So to most noble Caesar. Them prepare within. I am to blame to be thus waited for. Now, Sinner, now Metellus, what Trebonius? I have an hour's talk in store for you. Remember that you call on me today. Be near me that I remember you. I will, and so near will I be that your best friends shall wish I had been further. Good friends, go in and taste some wine with me. And we, like friends, will straightway go together. But every like is not the same, O oh Caesar. The heart of Brutus yearns to think upon. And they exit, which brings us to Act 2, Scene 3, a street near the capital. Enter Artemidorus, reading a paper. Caesar, beware of Brutus. Take heed of Cassius, come not near Casca, have an eye to Synod, trust not Trebonius, mark well Metellus, Simbar, Decius, Brutus, loves thee not, thou hast wronged Caius Vagarius. There is but one mind in all these men, and it is bent against Caesar. If thou beest not immortal, look about you, security gives way to conspiracy. The mighty gods defend thee. Thy lover, Artemidorus. Here will I stand till Caesar pass along. And as a suitor, will I give him this? My heart laments that virtue cannot live out of the teeth of emulation. If thou read this, O Caesar, thou mayst live. If not, the fates with traitors do contrive. And he exits, which brings us to Act 2, Scene 4, another part of the same street before the house of Brutus, and to Portia and Lucius. I pray thee, boy. Run to the senate house, say not to answer me, but get thee done. Why dost thou say? To know my errand, madam. I would have had thee there and here again, ere I can tell thee 
for thou shalt do there. O constancy, be strong upon my side, set a huge mountain between my heart and tongue. I have a man's mind, but a woman's might. How hard is it is for women to keep counsel? Art thou here yet? Madam, what should I do? Run to the castle and nothing else, and so return to you and nothing else. Yes, bring me word, boy, if thy lord to look well, for he went sickly forth, and take good note what Caesar doth, what suitors press to him. Hark, boy, what noise is that? I hear none, madam. Prithee, listen well. I heard a bustling rumour, like a fray, and the wind brings it from the capital. Soothe, madam, I hear nothing. Come hither, fellow. Which way hast thou been? Mine own house, good lady. What is the o'clock? Of the ninth hour, lady. Is Caesar yet gone to the capital? Madam, not yet. I go to take my stand, to see him pass on to the capital. Thou hast so suit, Caesar, hast thou not? But I have, lady, if it will please Caesar. To be so good to Caesar as to hear me, I shall beseech him to befriend himself. Why, knows thou any harms intended towards him? None that I know will be. Much that I fear may chance. Good morrow to you. Here the street is narrow. The throng that follows Caesar at the heels of senators and praetors, common suitors, will crowd a feeble man almost to death. I'll get me to a place more void, and there speak to great Caesar as he comes along. And the soothsayer exits. I must go in. I, me. How weak a thing the heart of woman is. O oh, Brutus, the heavens speed thee in thine enterprise. Sure, the boy heard me. Brutus hath in a suit that Caesar will not grant. Oh, I grow faint. <laughs> Run, Lucius, and commend me to my lord. Say I am merry. Come to me again, and bring me the word what he doth say to thee. They exit severally. And that brings us to the start of Act 3, where we're going to take a short intermission. Thank you for joining us so far.
And we are back. Thank you for joining us again, comrades, as we start Julius Caesar at Act 3, Scene 1. Rome, before the capital, the Senate sitting above. A crowd of people, among them Artemisaurus and the soothsayer, Flourish, enter Caesar, Brutus, Cassius, Casca, Decius Brutus, Metellus Clint, Kimber, Trebonius, Cinna, Antony, Lepidus, Papilius, Publius, and others. Ides of March, you come. Aye, Caesar, but not gone. Hail, Caesar, read the schedule. Trebonius, Trebonius doth desire you to overread. At your best leisure, this is his humble suit. Well, Caesar, read mine first, for mine's a suit that touches Caesar nearer. Read it, great Caesar. What betters as ourselves shall be less served. Delay not, Caesar, read it instantly. What, is this fellow mad? Sarah, give place. What, urge you your petitions in the street? Come to the capital. Caesar goes up to the Senate house, the rest of them following. I wish your enterprise today may thrive. What enterprise, Pilius? Fare you well. And Papilius advances to Caesar. What said Papilius Lena? He wished today our enterprise might thrive. I fear our purpose is discovered. Look how he makes to Caesar mark him. Casca, be sudden, for we fear prevention. Brutus, what shall be done? If this be known, Cassius or Caesar never shall turn back, for I will slay myself. Cassius, be constant. Populius Lena speaks not of our purposes, for, look, he smiles, and Caesar doth not change. Trebonius knows his time, for, look you, Brutus, he draws Mark Antony out of the way. Antony and Trebonius exit. Metellus Simber, let him go and presently prefer his suit to Caesar. He is addressed. Press near and second him. Aska, you are the first that rears your hand. Are we all ready? What is now amiss that Caesar and his senate must redress? Most high, most mighty, and most puissant Caesar. Metellus Simber throws before thy seat an humble heart. And he kneels. Thus present, prevent thee, Simba. These couching and these lowly courtesies might fire the blood of ordinary men and turn pre-ordinance and first decree into the law of children. Be not fond. To think that Caesar bears such rebel blood that will be thawed from the true quality with that which melteth fools. I mean sweet words, low crooked curtsies and base spaniel fawning. Thy brother by degree is banished. If thou dost bend and pray and fawn for him, I spur thee like a cur out of my way. No, Caesar doth not wrong nor without cause will he be satisfied. Is there no voice more worthy than my own? Sweetly in great Caesar's ear for the repealing of my banished brother. I kiss thy hand, but not in flattery, Caesar, desiring thee that Publius Simba may have an immediate freedom of repeal. What, Brutus? Pardon, Caesar. Caesar, pardon. As low as to thy foot doth Cassius fall, to beg enfranchisement for Publius Simba. I would be well moved if I were as you. If I could pray to move, prayers would move me. But I am constant as the northern star. <laughs> I don't think this is my line. I think this is Caesar, sorry. Oh, is it, yeah, this, is it this us? Is yeah, it is oh, Caesar. Oh, okay. Sorry, that's weird. <laughs> that's all right. Um, I was like, what I could I well be move if I were as you. If I could pray to move, prayers would move me. 
but I am constant as the northern star, of whose true fixed and resting quality there is no fellow in the firmament. The skies are painted with unnumbered sparks, they are all fire, and every one doth shine. But there's but one in all doth hold his place, so in the world tis furnished well with men, and men are flesh and blood, and apprehensive. Yet in number I do know but one that unassailable holds on his rank, unshaped of motion, and that I am he. Let me a little show it, even in this, that I was constant Simba should be banished, and constant do remain to keep him so. O oh, Caesar! Hence, wilt thou lift up Olympus? Great Caesar! Not Brutus bootless kneel? Speak, hands from me! And Casca first, then the other conspirators and Brutus stab Caesar. Et. U. Brut. N. For. Caesar. And he dies. Liberty! Freedom! Tyranny is dead! Run hence, proclaim, cry it about the streets! Some to the common pulpits and cry out, Liberty, freedom, and enfranchisement. People and senators, be not affrighted. Fly not, stand stiff, ambition's debt is paid. Go to the pulpit, Brutus. Cassius, too. Where's Publius? Here, quite confounded with this mutiny. Stand fast together, lest some friend of Caesar's should chance. Talk not of standing, Publius. Good cheer. There is no harm intended to your person, nor to no Roman else. So tell them, Publius. And leave us, Publius, lest that the people rushing on us should do your age some mischief. Do so. And let no man abide this deed but we, the doers. And Trebonius re enters. Where is Antony? Led to his house amazed, men, wives, and children stare, cry out and run as if it were a doomsday. Fates, we will know your pleasures. That we shall die, we know. Tis but the time and drawing days out that men stand upon. Why? He that cuts off twenty years of life, cuts off so many years of fearing death. Grant that, and then is death a benefit. So are we Caesar's friends that have abridged his time of fearing death. Stoop, Romans, stoop, and let us bathe our hands in Caesar's blood, up to the elbows, and besmear our swords. Then walk we forth, even to the marketplace, and, waving our red weapons o'er our heads, let us cry, Peace, freedom, and liberty! Stoop then, and wash. How many ages hence shall this our lofty scene be acted over, in states unborn, and accents yet unknown? How many times shall Caesar bleed in sport, now that on Pompey's basis lies along no worthier than the dust? So oft as that shall be, so often shall the nod of us hold the men that gave their country liberty. But shall we forth? Aye, every man away. Brutus shall lead, and we will grace his heels with the most boldest and best hearts. And the servant enters. Soft, who comes here? A friend of Antony's. Thus, Brutus, did my master bid me kneel, thus did Mark Antony bid me fall down, and being prostrate, thus he bade me say, Brutus is noble, wise, valiant, and honest. Caesar was mighty, bold, royal, and loving. Say I love Brutus, and I honour him. Say I feared Caesar, honoured him, and loved him. If Brutus will vouchsafe that Antony may safely come to him, and be resolved how Caesar hath deserved to lie in death, Mark Antony shall not love Caesar dead, so well as Brutus living, but will follow the fortunes and affairs of noble Brutus through the hazards of this untrod state with all true faith. So says my master Antony. Thy master is a wise and valiant Roman. I never thought him worse. 
tell him, so please him, come unto this place, he shall be satisfied, and by my honour depart untouched. I'll fetch him presently, and the servant accepts. I know that we shall have him well to friend. I wish we may, but yet have I a mind that fits him much, and my misgiving still falls shrewdly to the purpose. But here comes Antony. Antony re-enters. Welcome, Mark Antony. Oh, mighty Caesar, dost thou lie so low? Are all thy conquests, glories, triumphs, spoils shrunk to this little measure? Fare thee well. I know not, gentlemen, what you intend. Who else must be let blood? Who else is rank? If I myself there is no hour so fit as Caesar's death hour, nor no instrument of half that worth as those your sores made rich with the most noble blood of all this world, I do beseech thee if thee bear me hard. Now, whilst your purpled hands do reek and smoke, fulfil your pleasure. Of a thousand years I shall not find myself so apt to die. No place will please me so, no mean of death is here by Caesar and by you cut off. His choice and master spirits of this age. O oh, Antony, beg not your death of us, though now we must appear bloody and cruel, as by our hands and this our present act you see we do, yet see you but our hands, and this the bleeding business they have done. Our hearts you see not, they are pitiful, and pity to the general wrong of Rome. As fire drives out fire, so pity, pity, hath done this deed on Caesar. For your part, to you our swords have leaden points, Mark Antony, our arms in strength of malice, and our hearts of brothers' tempers, to receive you in with all kind love, good thoughts, and reverence. Your voice shall be as strong as any man in the disposing of new dignity. Only be patient till we have appeased the multitude, besides themselves with fear, and then we will deliver you the cause. Why, I, that did love Caesar when I struck him, have thus proceeded. I doubt not of your wisdom. Let each man render me his bloody hand. First, Marcus Brutus, will I shake with you? Next, Caius Cassius, do I take your hand? Now, Theseus Brutus, yours, now yours, Metellus, yours, Cinna, and my valiant Casca, yours, though last not last in love, yours, good Trebonius. Gentlemen all, alas, what shall I say? My credit now stands on slippery ground, but one of two bad ways you must conceit me, either a coward or a flatterer. That I did love thee, Caesar, oh, tis true. If then thy spirit look upon us now, shall it not grieve thee dearer than thy death? To see thy Antony making his peace, shaking the bloody fingers of thy foes most noble in the presence of thy course. Had I as many eyes as thou hast wounds, weeping as fast as they stream forth thy blood, it would become me better than to close in terms of friendship with thine enemies. Pardon me, Julius. Here was thou bade, brave heart. Here didst thou fall, and here thy hunters stand, signed in thy spoil, and crimsoned in thy leaf. O oh, world, thou wast the forest to this heart, and this indeed, O oh, world, the heart of thee. How like a deer, struck by many princes, dost thou here lie? Mark Antony. Pardon me, Caius Cassius, the enemies of Caesar shall say this, then... In a friend that is a cold modest. I blame you not for praising Caesar so, but what compact mean you to have with us? Will you be pricked in number of our friends, or shall we on and not depend on you? Therefore I took your hands, but was indeed swayed from the point by looking down on Caesar. The friends am I with you all, and love you all upon this hope that you shall give me reasons why and wherein Caesar was dangerous. Or else were this a savage spectacle. Our reasons are so full of good regard that were you, Antony, the son of Caesar, you should be satisfied. That's all I seek. 
and a moreover suitor that i may produce his body to the market-place and in the pulpit as becomes a friend speak in the order of his funeral you shall mark antony brutus a word with you you know not what you do do not consent that antony speak in his funeral know you how much the people may be moved by that which he will utter by your pardon I will myself into the pulpit first, and show the reason of our Caesar's death. What Antony shall speak, I will protest. He speaks by leave and by permission, and that we are con contented Caesar shall have all true rites and lawful ceremonies. It shall advantage more than do us wrong. I know not what may fall. I like it not. Mark Antony, here. Take you Caesar's body. You shall not in your funeral speech blame us, but speak all good you can devise of Caesar, and say you do it by our permission, else you shall not have any hand at all about his funeral. And you shall speak in the same pulpit whereto I am going, after my speech is ended. Be it so, I do desire no more. Prepare the body then, and follow us. And all but Antony leave. Pardon me, thou bleeding piece of earth, that I am meek and gentle with these butchers. Thou art the ruins of the noblest man that ever lived in the tide of times. Woe to the hand that shed this costly blood. Over thy wounds now do I prophesy, which like dumb mouths do ope their ruby lips to beg the voice and utterance of my tongue. A curse shall light upon the limbs of men. Domestic fury and fierce civil strife shall cumber all the parts of Italy. Blood and destruction shall be so in use, and dreadful objects so familiar that mothers shall but smile when they behold their infants quartered with the hands of war. All pity choked with custom of fell deeds, and Caesar's spirit ranging for revenge, with eight by his side come hot from hell, shall in these confines with a monarch's voice cry havoc. And let slip the dogs of war, where this foul deed shall smell above the earth, the carrion men groaning for burial. And the servant enters. You serve Octavius Caesar, do you not? I do, Mark Antony. Caesar did right for him to come to Rome. He did receive his letters and is coming, and bid me to say to you by word of my oh, Caesar. Thy heart is big. Get thee apart and weep. Passion I see is catching, for mine eyes seeing those beads of sorrow stand and I begin to water. Is thy master coming? Uh, he, he lies tonight within seven leagues of Rome. Post back with speed and tell him what a chance. Here is a morning Rome, a dangerous Rome, no Rome of safety for Octavius yet. Hie hence and tell him so. Yet stay a while, thou shalt not back till I have borne this course into the marketplace. There shall I try in my oration how the people take the cruel issue of these bloody men. According to the which thou shalt discourse, the young Octavius of the state of things. Lend me your hand. And Antony leaves with Caesar's body, which brings us to Act 3, Scene 2, in the Forum, and to Brutus and Cassius, and a throng of citizens. We will be satisfied. Let us be satisfied. Then follow me, and give me audience, friends. Cassius, go you into the other street, and part the numbers. Those that will hear me speak, let him stay here. Those that will follow Cassius, go with him. And public reasons shall be rendered of Caesar's death. I will hear Brutus speak. I will hear Cassius, and compare their reasons when severally we hear them rendered. Exit Cassius with some of the citizens. Brutus goes into the pulpit. Noble Brutus is ascended. Silence. Be patient till the last. Romans, countrymen, and lovers, hear me for my course, and be silent that you may hear. Believe me for mine honour, and have respect to mine honour that you may believe. 
Censure me in your wisdom and awake your senses that you may the better judge. If there be any in this assembly, any dear friend of Caesar's, to him I say that Brutus' love to Caesar was no less than his. If then that friend demand why Caesar rose against, why Brutus rose against Caesar, this is my answer. Not that I loved Caesar less, but that I loved Rome more. Had you rather Caesar were living and die all slaves than that Caesar were dead to live all free men? As Caesar loved me, I weep for him. As he was fortunate, I rejoice at it. As he was valiant, I honour him. But as he was ambitious, I slew him. There is tears for his love, joy for his fortune, honour for his valour, and death for his ambition. Who is here so base that would be a bondman? If any speak for him, I have offended. Who is here so rude that would not be a Roman? If any speak, for I have offended. Who is here so vile that will not love his country? If any speak, for him have I offended. I pause for a reply. None. 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 Then none have I offended. I have done no more to Caesar than you shall do to Brutus. The question of his death is enrolled in the capital, his glory not extenuated wherein he was worthy, nor his offences enforced, for which he suffered death. Enter Antony and others with Caesar's body. Here comes his body, mourned by Mark Antony, who, though he had no hand in his death, shall receive the benefit of his dying, a place in the commonwealth, as which of will as which of you shall not? With this I depart, that, as I slew my best lover for the good of Rome, I have the same dagger for myself, when it shall please my country to need my death. Live, Brutus, oh, live, Brutus live, 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 live. Bring, bring him with triumph home unto his house. Bring, with, bring him with triumph home unto his house. Give him a statue of his ancestors. Him be Caesar. Caesar's better parts shall be crowned in Brutus. We'll bring, bring him, him to... to his house with shouts and clamors. My countrymen. Peace, silence. Brutus speaks. Peace, ho. Good countrymen, let me depart alone. And for my sake, stay here with Antony. Do grace to Caesar's corpse, and grace his speech, tending to Caesar's glories, which Mark Antony, by our permission, is allowed to make. I do entreat you, not a man depart, save I alone, till Antony have spoken. And Brutus exits. Hey, ho, and let us hear Mark Antony. Him go up into the public chair, we'll hear him. Noble Antony, go up! For Brutus's sake, I am beholden to you. And Antony goes into the pulpit. What does he say of Brutus? As for Brutus's sake, he finds himself beholden to us all. T'were best he speak no harm of Brutus here. Caesar was a tyrant! Sir, we are blessed that Rome is rid of him. Peace, let us hear what Antony can say. You, General Romans. So, let, Please, us, hear let him. us hear him. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them, the good is oft interred with their bones, so let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus hath told you that Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault, and grievously hath Caesar answered it. Here, under leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honorable man, so are they all, all honorable men, come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. 
He hath brought many captives home to Rome, whose ransoms did the general coffers fill. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When that the poor have cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. You all did see that on the looper call I thrice presented him kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and sure, he is an honorable man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but here I am to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause withholds you, then, to mourn for him? O oh, judgment, thou art fled to brutish beasts, and men have lost their reason. Bear with me. My heart is in the coffin there with Caesar, and I must pause to look to me. He thinks there is much reason in his sayings. If thou consider rightly of the matters, Caesar has had great wrong. As he masters, I fear there will a worse come in his place. Marked ye his words? He would not take the crown, therefore it is certain he was not ambitious. If it be so, some will dear abide it. Poor soul, his eyes are red as fire with weeping. There's not a nobler man in Rome than Antony. Now mark him, he begins again to speak. But yesterday, the word of Caesar might have stood against the world. Now lies he there, and none so poor to do him reverence. O oh, masters, if I were disposed to stir your hearts and minds to mutiny and rage, I should do Brutus wrong, Cassius wrong, who you all know are honorable men. I will not do them wrong. I rather choose to wrong the dead, to wrong myself and you, than I will wrong such honorable men. But here's a parchment with the seal of Caesar. I found it in his closet. Tis his will. Let but the commons hear this testament, which... Pardon me, I do not mean to read. And they would go and kiss dead Caesar's wounds, and dip their napkins in his sacred blood, yea, beg a hair of him for memory, and dying mention it within their wills, bequeathing it as a rich legacy unto their issue. We'll hear the will. Read it, Mark Antony. The will! The, the will. will! We will hear Caesar's will! Have patience, gentle friends. I must not read it. It is not in me you know how Caesar loved you. You are not wood, you are not stones, but men. And being men bearing the will of Caesar, it will inflame you, it will make you mad. Tis good you know not that you are his heirs, for if you should, oh, what would come of it? Read the will. We'll hear it, Antony. You shall read us the will, Caesar's will. Will you be patient? Will you stay a while? I have overshot myself to tell you of it. I fear I wronged the honorable men whose daggers have stabbed Caesar. I do fear it. They were traitors, honorable men. The will, the testament. the testament. They were villains, murderers. The will, read the will. You will compel me, then, to read the will? Then make a ring about the corpse of Caesar. And let me show you him that made the will. Shall I descend, and will you give me leave? Come down. Down. Descend. I'll have leave. And Antony comes down. A ring. Stand round. Stand from the hearse. Stand from the body. Run for Antony. Most noble Antony. Nay, press not so upon me. Stand far off. Back. Come back. back. Room. 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 Bear back. Bear back. Bear back. If you have tears, prepare to shed them now. You all this do know this mantle. I remember the first time ever Caesar put it on. It was on a summer evening in his tent. That day he overcame the Nervii. Look, in this place ran Cassius's dagger through. See what a rent the envious Casca made. Through this the well-beloved Brutus stabbed, and as he plucked his cursed steel away, mark how the blood of Caesar followed it, as rushing out of doors to be resolved, as Brutus so unkindly knocked, or no. 
for Brutus, as you know, was Caesar's angel. Judge, oh you gods, how dearly Caesar loved him. This was the most unkindest cut of all. For when the noble Caesar saw him stab, ingratitude, more strong than a traitor's arms, quite vanquished him, then burst his mighty heart. And in his mantle, muffling up his face, even at the base of Pompey's statua, which all the while ran blood, great Caesar fell. Oh, what a fall was there, my countrymen! Then I and you and all of us fell down, whilst bloody treason flourished over us. Oh, now you weep, and I perceive you feel the dint of pity these gracious drops. Kind souls, what weep you when you behold our Caesar's vesture wounded? Look you here, he, here he is himself, marred, as you see, with traitors. Oh, piteous spectacle! Oh, noble Caesar! Full day! Oh, traitors! Villains! Most bloody sight! We will be revenged! Then Revenge about, about see, see, burn, 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 fire, fire, fire kill, 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 slay, slay, but not, but not a traitor to live. Stay, countrymen. It's there, hear the noble Antony. We'll hear him, we'll follow him, we'll die with him. Good friends, sweet friends, let me not stir you up to such a sudden flood of mutiny. They that have done this deed are honorable. What private griefs they have, alas, I know not, that made them do it. They are wise and honorable, and will, no doubt, with reasons, answer you. I come not, friends, to seal away your hearts. I am no orator, as Brutus is. But as you all know me all, a plain, blunt man that love my friend, and that they know full well that gave me public leave to speak of him. For I have neither wit nor words nor worth action nor utterance, nor the power of speech to stir men's blood. I only speak right on. I tell you that which you yourselves know, show you sweet Caesar's wounds, pour on the mouths and bid them speak for me. But were I Brutus, and Brutus Antony, there were an Antony would ruffle up your spirits and put tongue in every wound of Caesar that should move the stones of Rome to rise and you. Mutiny! Brutus! And come, seek the conspirators! Yet hear me, countrymen, yet hear me speak. Peace, Peace ho! Oh, Get Antony! Most noble Antony! Why, friends, you go to do you know not what. Wherein hath Caesar thus deserved your loves? Alas, you know not, I must tell you then. You have forgot the will I told you about. Most, Most true. true. The will. The will. Let's Let stay in the, the will. Here is the will, and under Caesar's seal, to every Roman citizen he gives to every several man seventy-five drachmas. Most noble Caesar will revenge his death. O royal Caesar! Hear me with patience. Peace, Peace. Oh. oh. Moreover, he had left you all his walks, his private arbors and new planted orchards. On this side, Tiber, he hath left them you, and to your heirs forever common pleasure is to walk abroad and recreate yourself. Here was a Caesar. When comes such another? Never, never come away, away. Will burn his body in the holy place, and with the brands fire the traitors' houses. Take up the body. Go fetch fire. Pluck down benches. Pluck down forms, windows, anything. And the citizens uh. exit with the body. <laughs> now let it work. Mischief thou art afoot. Take thou that what course thou will. And a servant enters. How now, fellow? Sir, Octavius has already come to Rome. Where is he? He and Lepidus are at Caesar's house. And thither will I straight to visit him. He comes upon a wish. 
Fortune is merry and in this mood will give us anything. I heard him say Brutus and Cassius saw rid like madmen through the gates of Rome. Be like they had some notice of the people, how I had moved them. Bring me to Octavius. And they exit, which brings us to Act 3, Scene 3, A Street. Enter Sinner the Poet. I dreamt tonight that I did feast with Caesar, and that things unlucky charge my fantasy. I have no will to wander forth of doors, yet something leads me forth. And the citizens enter. What is your name? Where are you going? Where do you dwell? Are you a married man or a bachelor? Answer every man directly. I and briefly. I and wisely. I and truly, you were best. What is my name? Whither am I going? Where do I dwell? Am I a married man or bachelor? Then, to answer every man directly and briefly, wisely and truly, wisely I say, I am a bachelor. That's as much as to say that they are fools that marry. You'll bear me a bang for that, I fear. Proceed directly. Directly, I am going to Caesar's funeral. An enemy. As a friend. That matter is answered directly. For your dwelling, briefly. Lee, I dwell by the capital. Your name, sir, tr truly. Truly, my name is Cena. Tear him to pieces! He's a conspirator! Oh no, I am Cena the poet! I am Cena the poet! Tear him for his bad verses! Tear him for his bad verses! I am not Cena the conspirator! It is no matter. His name's Cena. Pluck but his name out of his heart and turn him. Tear him! Tear him! Come, brands ho! Fire brands to Brutus, to Cassius, burn all, some to Dacius' house, and some to Casca's, some to Ligarius. Away, go! And they exit, which brings us to Act 4, Scene 1, A House in Rome. Antony, Octavius, and Lepidus are seated at a table. These many, then, shall die. Their names are great. Your brother, too, must die. Consent you, Lepidus? I do consent. Prick him down. Antony. Upon condition, Publius shall not live, who is your sister's son, Mark Antony. He shall not live. Look, with a spot, I damn him. But, Lepidus, go you to Caesar's house, fetch the will hither, and we shall determine how to cut off some ch charge in legacy. What, shall I find you here? Or here, or at the capital? And Lepidus exits. This is a slight, unmeritable man. Meet to be sent on errands. Is it fit our threefold world divided? He should stand one of the three to share it. So you thought him, and took his voice who should be pricked to die in our black sentence and proscription. Octavius, I have seen more days than you. And though we lay these honors on this man to ease ourselves of divers slanderous loads, he shall but bear them as the ass bears gold, to groan and sweat under the business, either led or driven as we point the way, and having brought our treasure where we will, then we take down his load and turn him off, like to the empty ass, to shake his ears and graze in commons. <laughs> you may do your well, but he's a tried and valiant soldier. So is my horse, Octavius, and for that I do appoint him store of provender. It is a creature that I teach to fight, a wind to stop, to run directly on, his corporal motion governed by my spirit. And in some taste is Lepidus but so. He must be taught and trained and bid go forth, a barren-spirited fellow, one that feeds on abjects, orts, and imitations, which, out of use, and staled by other men, begin his fashion. Do not talk of him but as a property. And now, Octavius, listen great things. Brutus and Cassius are loving powers, we must straight make head. Therefore let our alliance be combined, our best friends made, our means stretched, and let us presently go sit in council. How covert matters may be best disclosed, and open peril's surest answer. Let us do so, for we are at the stake, 
and be it about with many enemies. And some that smile have in their hearts, I fear millions of mischiefs. And so they leave. Act four, scene two, a camp near Sardis, before Brutus's tent. There's a drum, enter Brutus, Lucilius, Lucius, and soldiers. Titinius and Pindarus meeting them. Stand, ho! Give the word, ho, and stand. What now, Lucilius? Is Cassius near? He is at hand, and Pindarus has come, to do salutations from his master. He greets me well. Your master, Pindarus, in his own change, or by ill of officers, hath given me some worthy cause to wish things done undone. But if he be at hand, I shall be satisfied. Do not doubt, but that my noble ma master will appear, such, such as he is, full of regard and honour. He is not doubted. A word, Lucilius. How he received you, let me be resolved. With courtesy, and with respect enough, but not with such familiar instances, nor with such free and friendly conference as he hath used of old. Thou hast described a hot friend cooling. Ever note, Lucilius, when love begins to sicken and decay, it useth an enforced ceremony. There are no tricks in plain and simple faith, but hollow men, like horses hot at hand, make gallant show and promise of their metal. But when they should endure the bloody spur, they fall their crests, and, like deceitful jades, sink in the trial. Comes his army on. They mean this night in Sardis to be quartered. The greater part, the horse in general, are come Cassius. Hark, he has arrived. There's a low march within. March gently on to meet him. Enter Cassius and his powers. Stand, ho. Stand, ho. Speak the word along. Stand. 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 Most noble brother, you have done me wrong. Judge me, you gods. Wrong I mine enemies. And if not so, how should I wrong a brother? Brutus, this sober form of yours hides wrong. But when you do them... Cassius, be content. Speak your griefs softly. I do know you well. Before your eyes of both our armies here, which should perceive nothing but love from us, let us not wrangle. Bid them move away. Then, in my tent, Cassius, enlarge your griefs, and I will give you audience. Pindarus, bid our commanders lay their charges off. Lucilius, do you the like, and let no man come to our tent till we have done our conference. Tell Lucius and Titinus guard our door. So they leave, which brings us to Act 4, Scene 3, in Brutus's tent, and to Brutus and Cassius. That you have wronged me doth appear in this. You have condemned and noted Lucius Pella for taking bribes here of the Sardians, where in my letters praying on his side, because I knew the man. You wronged yourself to write in such a case. In such a time as this, it is not that every nice offence should bear his comment. Let me tell you, Cassius, you yourself are much condemned to have an itching palm, to sell and march your officers for gold to undeservers. Aye, an itching palm. You know that you are Brutus that speak this, or by the gods this speech were else your last. The name of Cassius honours this corruption, and chastisement doth therefore hide his head. <laughs> chastisement? Remember March, the Ides of Art March remember. Did not great Julius bleed for justice's sake? What vein touched his body that did st what villain touched his body that did stab and not for justice? What shall one of us that struck the foremost man of all this world, but for supporting robbers, shall we now contaminate our fingers with base bribes and sell the mighty space of our large honours for so much trash as may be grasped thus? I had rather be a dog and bay the moon than such a Roman. Brutus, bay not me, I'll not endure it. 
You forget yourself. To hedge me in, I am a soldier. I, older in practice, abler than yourself, to make conditions. Go to. You are not, Cassius. I am. I say you are not. Urge me no more. I shall forget myself. Have mind upon your health. Tempt me no further. Away, slight man. Is it possible? Hear me, for I will speak. Must I give way and room to your rash collar? Shall I be frighted when a madman stares? Oh, ye gods, ye gods! Must I endure all this? All this, I more. Fret till your proud heart break. Go show your slaves how choleric you are, and make your bondmen tremble. Must I budge? Must I observe you? Must I stand and crouch under your testy humour? By the gods, you shall digest the venom of your spleen, though it do split you. For from this day forth, I'll use you for my mirth, yea, for my laughter, when you are waspish. Has it come to this? You say you are a better soldier. Let it appear so. Make your vaunting true. And it shall please me well. For mine own part, I shall be glad to learn of noble men. You wrong me every way. You wrong me, Brutus. I said an elder soldier, not a better. Did I say better? If you did, I care not. When Caesar lived, he does not thus have moved me. Peace, peace. You durst not have tempted him. I durst not. No. What? Durst not tempt him? For your life, you durst not. Do not presume too much upon my love. I may do that I shall be sorry for. You may have done that you should be sorry for. There is no terror, Cassius, in your threats, for I am armed so strong in honesty that they pass by me as idle as the wind, which I respect not. I did send to you for certain sums of gold which you denied me, for I can raise no money by vile means. By heaven, I had rather coin my heart and drop my blood for drachmas than to wring from the hard hands of peasants their vile trash by any indirection. I did send, for, did send to you for gold to pay my legions, which you denied me. Was that done like Cassius? Should I have answered Caius Cassius so, when Marcus Brutus grows so covetous to lock such rascal counters from his friends? Be ready, gods, with all your thunderbolts. Dash him to pieces. I denied you not. You did. I did not. He was but a fool that brought my answer back. Brutus had revived my heart. My friend should bear his friend's infirmities, but Brutus makes mine greater than they are. I do not till you practice them on me. You love me not. I did not like your faults. Friendly I could never see such faults. A flatterer's would not, though they do appear as huge as high Olympus. Come, Antony and young Octavius, come. Revenge yourselves alone on Cassius, for Cassius is a weary of the world. Hated by one he loves. Brave by his brother, checked like a bondman, all his faults observed, set in a notebook, learned and conned by rote, cast into my teeth. I should weep, my spirit from mine eyes. There is my dagger, and there my naked breast within a heart. Dearer than Plutus mine, richer than gold. If that thou pissed a Roman, take it forth. I that deny thee gold will give my heart. Strike as thou didst at Caesar, for I know when thou dost hate him worse thou lovest him better than ever thy lovest Cassius. Sheath your dagger. Be angry when you will. It shall have scope. Do what you will. Dishonour shall be humour. O Cassius, you are yoked with a lamb that carries anger as the flint bears fire, who, much enforced, shows a hasty spark, and straight is cold again. Hath Cassius lived to be but mirth and laughter to his Brutus, when grief and blood ill-tempered vexeth him? When I spoke that, I was ill-tempered too. Do you confess so much? Give me your hand. And my heart too. Brutus, 
What's the matter? I'm not, I'm not your love enough to bear with me when that rash humor which my mother gave me makes me forgetful. Yes, Cassius, and from henceforth, when you are over earnest with your Brutus, he'll think your mother chides and leave you so. Let me go in to see the generals. There is some grudge between them. Tis not meet there he be alone. He shall not come to them. Nothing but death shall stay me. And so the poet enters, followed by Lucilius, Titinius, and Lucius. How, how now? What's the matter? For shame, you generals! What do you mean? Love and be friends as two men should be. For I have seen more years, I'm sure, than ye. <laughs> how vilely doth this cynic rhyme. Get you hence, Sarah, saucy fellow, hence! Bear with him, Brutus, tis his fashion. I'll know his humour when he knows his time. What should the wars do with these jigging, jigging fools? Companion, hence. Away, away, be gone. So the poet leaves. Lucilius and Titinius, bid the commanders prepare to lodge their companies tonight. And come yourselves. Bring Masala with you, immediately to us. Lucilius and Titinius leave. Lucius, a bowl of wine. And Lucius leaves. <clears throat> I did not think you could have been so angry. O oh, Cassius, I am sick of many griefs. Of your philosophy, make no use if you give place to accidental evils. No man bears sorrow better. Portia is dead. <gasps> Portia? She is dead. How escaped I killing when I crossed you so? Oh, insupportable and touching loss. Upon what sickness? Impatient of my absence, and grief that young Octavius with Mark Antony have made themselves so strong, for with her death the tidings came. With this she felt distracted, and her attendants absent swallowed fire. And died so? Even so. <sighs> You mortal gods. Lucius re-enters with wine and a taper. Speak no more of her. Give me a bowl of wine. In this I bury all unkindness, Cassius. My heart is thirsty for that noble pledge. Fill Lucius, till the wine overswell the cup. I cannot drink too much of Brutus's love. Come in, Titinius. Lucius leaves. Re-enter Titinius with Masala. Welcome, good Masala. Now sit we close about this taper here, and call in question our necessities. Portia, art thou gone? No more, I pray you. Masala, I have received letters that young Octavius and Mark Antony come down upon us with a mighty power, bending their expectation towards Philippi. Myself have letters of the self-same tenor. With what addition? That by prescription and bills of outlawry, Octavius, Antony, and Lupedius have put to death a hundred centuries. Therein our letters do not well agree. Mine speak of seventy senators, senators that died, by their prescriptions, Cicero being one. Cicero is dead, and by the order of prescription. Had you your letters from your wife, mother? No, Miss Alla. Nor nothing in your letters of writ of her. Nothing, Miss Alla. That, methinks, is strange. Why ask you? Hear you aught of her in yours? No, my lord. Now, as you are a Roman, tell me true. Then, like a Roman, bear the truth I tell. For certain she is dead, and by strange manner. Why, farewell, Portia. We must die, Miss Alla, with... M Meditating that she must die once, I have the patience to endure it now. Even so great man, great losses should endure. I have as much of this in art as you, but yet my nature could not bear it so. Well, to our work alive. What do you think of marching to Philippi presently? I do not think it good. Your reason? This it is. Tis better that the enemy seek us. So shall he waste his means, weary his soldiers, doing himself offence while we, 
lying still are full of rest, defense, and nimbleness. Good reasons must, of force, give place to better. The people twixt Philippi and this ground do stand but in a forced affection, for they have grudged us contribution. The enemy, marching along by them, shall make a fuller number up. Come on refreshed, you added and encouraged. From which advantage shall we cut him off, if at Philippi we do face him there, these people at our back? Hear me, good brother. Under your pardon, you must note beside that we have tried the utmost of our friends, our legions are brimful, our cause is ripe, the enemy increaseth every day. We at the height are ready to decline. There is a tide in the affairs of men, which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. Omitted, all the voyage of their life is bound in shallows and in miseries. On such a full sea we are now afloat, and we must take the current when it serves, or lose our ventures. Then, with your will, go on. We'll along ourselves, and meet them at Philippi. The deep of night is crept upon our talk, and nature must obey necessity, which will niggard with a little rest. There is no more to say. No more. Good night. Early tomorrow will we rise and hence. Lucius. Lucius enters. My gown. Lucius leaves. Farewell, good Masala. Good night, Titinius. Noble, noble Cassius. Good night and good repose. Oh, my dear brother, this was an ill beginning of the night. Never comes such division between our souls. Let it not, Brutus. Everything is well. Good night, my lord. Good night, good brother. Night, Lord Brutus. Farewell, everyone. Everyone but Brutus leaves, and Lucius re-enters with the gown. Give me the gown. Where is thy instrument? Here in the tent. What? Thou speakest drowsily? Poor knave. I blame thee not. Thou art overwatched. Call Claudius and some of my other men. I have them sleep on cushions in my tent. Tharo and Claudius. Tharo and Claudius enter. Oh, my lord. I pray you, sirs, lie in my tent and sleep. It may be I shall rise you by and by on business to my brother Cassius. Oh, please you, we will stand and watch your pleasure. I will not have it so. Lie down, good sirs. It may be I shall otherwise bethink me. <laughs> Look, Lucius, here's the book I sought for so. I put it in the pocket of my gown. Harrow and Claudius, lie down. I was sure your lordship did not give it me. Bear with me, good boy. I am much forgetful. Canst thou hold up thy heavy eyes a while and touch thy instrument a strain or two? Ay, my lord, and please you. It does, my boy. I trouble thee too much, but thou art willing. It is my duty, sir. I should not urge thy duty past thy might. I know young bloods look for the time of rest. I have slept, my lord, already. It was well done. And thou shalt sleep again. I will not hold thee long. If I do live, I will be good to thee. There is music and a song. This is a sleepy tune, O oh, murderous slumber. Layest thou leaden mace upon my body that plays thee music. Gentle knave, good night. I will not to do thee so much wrong to wake thee. If thou dost nod, thou breakest thy instrument. I'll take it from thee. Good boy, good night. Let me see, let me see. Is not the leaf turned down where I left reading? Here it is, I think. And the ghost of Caesar enters. How ill this taper burns! Who comes here? I think it is the weakness of my eyes that shapes this monstrous apparition. It comes upon me. Art thou anything? Art thou some god, some angel, or some devil that makest my blood cold and my hair to stare? Speak to me what thou art. Thy evil spirit, Brutus. Why comest thou? Tell thee thou shalt see me at Philippi. Well, 
And I shall see thee again. I at Philippi. Why, I will see thee at Philippi then. And the ghost leaves. Now I have taken heart, thou vanishest. Ill spirit, I would hold more talk with thee. Boy, Lucius, Varro, Claudius, sirs, awake, Claudius. The strings, my lord, are false. He thinks he's still in his instrument. Lucius, awake. My lord. Didst thou dream, Lucius, that thou so criest out? My lord, I do not know why I did cry. Yes, that thou didst. Didst thou see anything? Nothing, my lord. Sleep again, Lucius. Sirrah Claudius. Fellow, thou awake. Lord? My lord? Why did thou so cry out, sirs, in your sleep? Do we, my lord? Do my lord? I saw you anything. Oh, my lord. I saw nothing. Nor I, my lord. Go, and commend me to my brother Cassius. Bid him set on his powers betimes before, and we will follow. It shall be, shall done, be done, my lord. My lord. And they exit, which brings us to the start of Act 5, where we are once again going to take a short break. Thank you for coming with us on this journey.
Welcome back to our production of Julius Caesar. You join us now at Act 5, Scene 1, The Plains of Philippi. Enter Octavius, Antony, and their army. Now, Antony, our hopes are answered. You said the enemy would not come down, but keep the hills and upper regions. It proves not so. Their battles are at hand. They mean to warn us at Philippi here, answering before we do demand of them. Tut. I am in their bosoms, and I know wherefore they do it. They could be condemned to visit other places and come down with fearful bravery, thinking by this face to fasten in our thoughts that they have courage, but tis not so. Enter a messenger. Where are you, generals? The enemy comes on in gallant show. Their bloody sign of battle is hung out, and something to be done immediately. Octavius leads your battle softly on, upon the left hand of the even field. Upon the right hand I keep thou the left. Why do you cross me in this exigent? I do not cross you, but I will do so. There's a march and a drum. Enter Brutus, Cassius, and the army, Lucilius, Titinius, Messala, and others. They stand and would have parley. Stand fast, Titinius. We must out and talk. Mark Antony, shall we give sign of battle? No, Caesar. We will answer on their charge. Make forth the generals would have some word. Stir not until the signal. Words before blows. Is it so, countrymen? Not that we love words better, as you do. Good words are better than bad strokes, Octavius. In your bad strokes, Brutus, you give good words. Witness the hole you made in Caesar's heart, crying, Long live, hail, Caesar! Antony, the posture of your blows are yet unknown. Before your words, they rob the high blood bees and leave them honeyless. Not stingless, too. Oh, yes, and soundless, too. For you have stolen their bu buzzing, Antony, and very wisely threat before you sting. Villains, you did not so, when your vile daggers hacked one another in the sides of Caesar, and you showed your teeth like apes, and fawned like hounds, and bowed like bondmen, kissing Caesar's feet. While well, damned Casca, like a cur behind, struck Caesar on the neck. Oh, you flatterers. Flatterers. Now, Brutus, thank yourself. This tongue had not offended so today, if Cassius might have ruled. Come, come, the cause. If arguing make us sweat, the proof of it will turn to redder drops. Look, I draw a sword against conspirators. When think you that the sword goes up again? Never. Till Caesar's three and thirty wounds be well avenged, or till another Caesar have added slaughter to the sword of traitors. Caesar, thou canst not die by traitors' hands unless thou bringst them with thee. So I hope I was not born to die on Brutus' sword. Oh, if thou wert the noblest of thy strain, young man, thou couldst not die more honourable. A peevish schoolboy, worthless of such honour, joined with a masker and a reveller. Old Cassius still! Come, Antony, away! Defiance, traitors, hurl we in your teeth. If you dare fight today, come to the field. If not, when you have stomachs. And Octavius and Antony, Antony leave with that army. Why now, wind swell billow and swim bark. The storm is up, and all is on the hazard. Ho, oh, Lucilius, hark a word with you. My lord. Brutus and Lucilius converse apart. Masala. What say, my general? Masala. This is my birthday, as this very day was Cassius born. Give me thy hand, must be thou my witness that against my will as he was I might compel to set up one battle all our liberties. 
You know that I held Epicurus strong and his opinion. Now I change my mind and partly credit things that do. Coming from Sardis on our former end, mighty eagles and there they perch, foraging and here is this morning are they fled away and and in their steads do grow kites fly or and downward so we were sickly prey their shadows seem a can of fatal under which our army lies ready to give believe i but believe it partially for i am fresh of spirit and resolved to meet all perils very commonly. Even so, Lucilius. Now, most noble Brutus, the gods today stand friendly that we may, lovers, lead on our days to aid. But since the affairs of men rest still, let's reason for us that may befall. If we do lose this battle, then is this the very last time we shall speak together? What are you then determined to do? Even by the rule of that philosophy by which I did blame Cato, which he did give himself, I know not how, but I do find it cowardly and vile for fear of what might fall, so to prevent the time of life. Arm myself with patience to stay the providence of some higher powers that govern us below. Then, if we lose this battle, you are contented. To be led in triumph through the streets of Rome. No, Cassius, no. Think not, thou noble Roman, that ever Brutus will go bound to Rome. He bears too great a mind. But this same day must end that work which the Ides of March begun. And whether we shall meet again, I know not. Therefore, our everlasting farewell take. For ever and for ever farewell, Cassius. If we do meet again, why, we shall smile. If not, why then, this is well made. Forever and forever, farewell, Brutus. If we do meet again, well, indeed. If not, tis true, parting what? Why then, lead on. Oh, that a man might know the end of his day's business ere it come. But it sufficeth that the day will end, and then the end is known. Come, ho, away! And they exit. Act 5, scene 2, the same, the field of battle. Alarum, enter Brutus. Ride! Masala, ride, and give these bills unto the legions on the other side. Loud alarm. Let them set on at once, for I perceive but cold demeanor in Octavius's wing, and sudden push gives them the overthrow. Ride, ride, Masala, let them all come down. And he exits. Act 5, scene 3, another part of the thrones. Enter Cassius and Titinius. Oh, look, Titinius looked the villa fly. Myself have to mine own turn. This ensign here of mine was turning back. I slew the coward and did take it from him. O oh, Cassius, Brutus gave the word too early, who having some advantage on Octavius, took it too eagerly. His soldiers fled to spoil, whilst we, by Antony, are all enclosed. Enter Pindarus. Fly further off, my lord. Fly further. Mark Antony is in your tent, my lord. Fly, therefore, noble Cassius. Fly far off. This hill is far enough. Look, look, Titinius, are those my tents where I perceive the fire? They are, my lord. Titinius, if thou mount thy my horse and hide thy spurs in him, till he have brought thee up to yonder troops, and here again that I may rest assured. Whether yond troops are friend or enemy. We'll be here again, even with a fault. And Titinius exits. Go, Pindarus, get higher on that hill. My sight was ever thick with Titinius, and 
and tell me what thy notice about Pindarus ascends the hill. <sighs> this day I breathe first, time is to come round. And where did I begin? There shall I end. My life is run as compass. Sir, what news? Oh, my lord. What news? Tinius is enclosed round about with horsemen that make to him on spur, yet he spurs on. Now they are almost on him. Now to Tinius. Now some light. Oh, he lights too. He is tame. There's a shout. And hark! They shout for joy. Come down. Behold no more. Oh, coward that I am to live so long to see my best friend taken before my... Pindarus descends. Come hither, Sirrah. In Parthia did I take thee prisoner, and then I swore thee, saving of thy life. Soever I did bid thee do, thou shalt attempt. Cup now. Keep thine oath. Now be a free man, and with this good sword that ran through sea, search this bosom. Stand not answer there. Here, take thou the hilts, and when my face is covered, as tis now, guide thou the sword. Pindarus stabs him. Caesar, thou art revenged, even with the sword that killed thee. And Cassius dies. So, I am free. So been, durst I have done my will. Oh, Cassius, up from this country Pindarus shall run, whenever Romans shall take note of him. And he exits, re-enter Titinius with Masala. It is but changed, Titinius, for Octavius is overthrown by noble Bruce's power, as Cassius' legions are by hand. These tidings will well comfort Cassius. Where do you leave him? This consulate, with Pindarus, his bondsman, on this hill. Is that not he that lies upon the ground? Lies not like the living. Not that he. No. This was he, Masala. No more. Sun, as in thy red rays thou sink to night, so in his red blood Cassius's day is set. Rome is set! Our day is gone. Clouds, dews, and dangers come. Our deeds are done. Mistrust of my success hath done this deed. Good success hath done this deed, O oh, hateful error, melancholy's child. While dost thou show to the apt thoughts of men the things that are not, O oh, error soon conceived, and never unto a happy birth, but kill for the mother that endangered thee. Pindarus, where art thou, Pindarus? Seek him, Tisnus, while I go meet the noble Bruzius, thrusting this report into his ears, and I say, thrusting it for piercing steel and darts envenomed, shall be as welcome to the ears of Brutus as tidings of. Are you, Messala? And I will seek for Pindarus the while. And Messala leaves. Didst thou send me forth, brave Cassius? My friends, sit on my brows this wreath of victory and bid me give it thee. Fair shouts. Thou hast misconstrued everything. Thee, take this garland on thy brow. Thy Brutus bid me give it thee, and I bidding. Brutus, and see how I regarded Caius Cassius. By your leave, gods, this is a Roman's part. Come, Cassius's sword, 
and find Titinius. And so Titinius kills himself. Alarum, Rianta Masala, Vibritus, Cato, Strato, Folinius, and Lucilius. Where, where, Masala, doth his body lie? Lo yonder, and Titinius mourning it. Titinius's face is upward. Is slain. Oh, Caesar, thou art mighty yet. Thy spirit walks abroad and turns our swords in our own proper entrails. Lo, alarms. Save Titinius. Lo, look whether he have not crowned dead Cassius. Are yet two Romans living such as these, the last of all the Romans? Fare thee well. Is it impossible that ever Rome should breed thy fellow? Friends, I owe more tears to this dead man than you shall see me pay. I shall find time, Cassius, I shall find time. Come, therefore, to Thasos send his body. His funeral shall not be in our camp, lest it discomfort us. Resilius, come, and come, young Cato, let us to the field. Lebeo and Flavius set our battles on. Tis three o'clock, and, Romans, yet ere night, we shall try fortune in a second fight. And so they act up, which brings us to Act 5, Scene 4, another part of the field. Alarum, enter fighting, soldiers of both armies, then Brutus, Cato, Lucilius, and others. Yet, countrymen, oh, yet hold up your heads! Faster doth not! Who will go with me? I will proclaim my name about the field. I am the son of Marcus Cato, ho! A foe to tyrants and my country's friend. I am the son of Marcus Cato, ho! And I am Brutus, Marcus Brutus. I, Brutus, my country's friend, know me for Brutus! And he exits. Oh, young and noble Cato, are thy down? Why, now thou diest as bravely as Titinius, and mayest be honoured, being Cato's son. Yield! Yield, or thou diest. Oh, or thou die. diest. I... Mm. <laughs> Only I yield to die. There is so much that thou wilt kill me straight. Kill Brutus and be honoured in his death. Must not, a noble prisoner. Room ho, tell Anthony, Brutus is taken. I'll tell the news, here comes the general. And Brutus Anthony. is taken, my lord. Where is he? Safe, Anthony, Brutus is safe enough. I dare assure thee that no enemy shall ever allow the noble Brutus. The gods defend him. So great a shame. When you do find him, or alive or dead, he will be found like Brutus, like himself. This is not Brutus, friend. But I assure you a prize no less than worth. Keep this man safe. Give him all kindness. I had rather have such men my friends than enemies. Go on. And see whether Brutus be alive or dead, and bring us word unto Octavius' tent how everything is changed. And they exit. Act 5, Scene 5, another part of the field. Enter Brutus, Dodanius, Clytus, Strato, and Polemius. Come, poor remains of friends, rest on this rock. Satilius showed the torchlight, but my lord, he came not back. He is, or taken or slain sit thee down clytus slaying is the word it is a deed in fashion hark thee clytus and he whispers what i my lord no not for all the world peace then no words i'll rather kill myself hark thee dardanius and he whispers shall i do such a deed Oh, Dardanius! Oh, Clytus! What ill-requested Brutus make to thee? To kill him, Clytus! Look, he meditates! 
Oh, is that noble vessel full of grief that runs over even at his eyes? Come hither, good Volumnius, list a word. What says my lord? Why, this, Volumnius, the ghost of Caesar hath appeared to me two several times by night at Sardis once, and this last night here in Philippi fields. I know my hour is come. Not so, my lord. Nay, I am sure it is Volumnius. Thou seest the world, Volumnius, how it goes. Our enemies have beat us to the pit. Blow alarms. It is more worthy to leap in ourselves than tarry till they push us. Good Volumnius, thou knowest that we two went to school together. Even for that, our love of old, I prithee, hold thou my sword hilts whilst I run on it. That's not an office for a friend, my lord. Alarm still. Fly, fly, my lord, there is no tarrying here. Farewell to you, and you, and you, Volumnius, Strato, thou hast been all this while asleep. Farewell to thee too, Strato. Countrymen, my heart doth joy that yet in all my life I found no man but he was true to me. I shall have glory by this losing day, more than Octavius and Mark Antony by this vile conquest shall attain unto. So, fare you well at once, for Brutus's tongue hath almost ended his life's history. Night hangs upon my eyes, my bones would rest, that have but laboured to attain this hour. Alarm, there's a cry within. Fly, fly, fly. Fly, my lord, fly. Hence, I will follow. Clytus, Dardanius, and Volumnius exit. I prithee, Strato, stay thou by thy lord. Thou art a fellow of good respect. Thy life have had some smatch of honour in it. Hold then my sword, and turn away thy face while I run upon it. Wilt thou, Strato? Give me your hand first. Fare you well, my lord. Farewell. Good Strato. He runs on his sword. Caesar, now be still. I killed not thee with half so good a will. Ugh. And Brutus dies. Alarum, retreat. Enter Octavius, Antony, Messala, Lucilius, and the army. What man is that? My master's man. Strato, where is thy master? Free from the bondage you are in, Miss Alla. The conquerors could but make a fire of him. Brutus only overcame himself, for no man else hath honour by his death. So Brutus should be found. Ah, thank thee, Brutus, that thou hast proved Lucilius as saying true. All that served Brutus, I will entertain them. Fellow, wilt thou bestow thy time with me? Aye, if Masala will prefer me to you. Do so, good Masala. How died my master Strato? I held the sword, and he did run on it. Octavius, then take him to follow thee, that did the latest service to my master. This was the noblest Roman of them all. All the conspirators, save only he, that they did in envy of great Caesar. He, only, the general honest thought, all good to all made one. His life was gentle. And the elements so mixed in him that nature might stand up and say to all the world, This was a man. According to his virtue, let us use him with all respect and rites of burial. Within my tent, his bones tonight shall lie, most like a soldier, ordered honor honorably. So call the field to rest, and let's away to part the glories of this happy day. And they all exit.
which brings us to the end of this production of Julius Caesar. At the end of our plays, we like to introduce the players. So we'll run down the cast list. Yeah. Uh, starting with Weak Boson. Oh, uh, yes, I go by Weak Boson on Twitch. I um, played Brutus, um, our boy. Um, and also <laughs> another character whose name I've forgotten, but only had like two lines. Um, yeah, this was really fun. Dardanius um, or something. Dardanius, yes. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, everyone. Hell yeah. Okay, and Atlas? Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Atlas, and I played Cassius, which is the only one that matters through <laughs> the rest of the characters I play, I don't care. Correct. <laughs> oh man, this is so freaking good. This is probably my favorite Shakespeare play, so I'm very, very excited, and also my favorite play, so I'm very, I'm Ooh. like so freaking happy. Um, yeah, everybody was incredible. And that's it. So nice. are you. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, you were great, Atlas. Thank you. Um, okay, and Kaylin? So, it's me. It's the one who's always <laughs> fucking here. Uh, so, I played Anthony and Casca and a few other random characters that were strewn about the play. And that was a lot of fun. That was... It was very fun being just ridiculously passive aggressive. It was so good. <laughs> just that entire really speech. I was made for that, okay? <laughs> yeah. That was excellent vibes. <laughs> okay, um, Nicola? Hi, I am Nicola. Uh, I'd like to tell you that if you are. Uh, the topic of suicide is uh, not uh, I don't know how to say it if you are thinking about uh, suicide please seek help yeah mm -hmm. and we can't lose more people yeah uh I'd like to also tell about the Trans Day of Visibility that will be uh, the last day of this month. So, trans rights? Trans rights. Fuck yeah, trans rights. <laughs> trans rights. Trans rights. Oh, oh yeah. Don't bind uh, or don't tag for too long. Especially when binding. Please make sure to um, stay safe because the symptoms of the uh, pandemic that is currently in the world uh, uh, can be similar to the symptoms of binding for too long. Mm. We love that. Yeah, mm. great. Bit of confusion in there. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, world. Thanks, world. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, thank you, Nicola. Next is Sarah. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Sarah. I'm also around here quite a lot, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, I played uh, half of Caesar a long time the alongside the wonderful Nicola, which was a pleasure. Julius Caesar. Julius yeah. Caesar. 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 Yeah. <laughs> uh, I also played Titinius, who didn't have any lines until like the last act and then nearly made me cry. Yeah. Uh, so, that's the best kind of yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Was, that was, that was, was great. <laughs> excellent. I, died for me. I had a great time as always. Everyone was wonderful and I'd like to thank you all. Aww. Aww. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and Ellie? Ellie? Hi. So, um, normally I, I've i done like a couple of streams with the Cropespear squad. My last one was when we did Hamlet a couple of weeks back. Um, I haven't, this is my first Thunderdome ever. Um, uh, I'm Sherry. So <laughs> I played. <laughs> Welcome to the chaos. Well, <laughs> glad to have you here. Thank yeah. you. So um, I played Octavius, Calpurnia, um, 
first soldier and third soldier, hence the confusion we had earlier in the last act. And I'd also like to very quickly say happy birthday to my mum, if she's either watching or listening. Happy birthday, Mother Dearest. Happy I'm birthday. sorry I can't be there right happy now. But... Birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and also thank you guys for being so great. Like, you, you guys rocked it. Aw, so did you. You also rocked it. Right. You did, yeah. Collectively, we rocked it. Redistribute the beans <laughs> of rocking we it. We all together <laughs> made up an amazing rock. <laughs> we are the biggest rock and the best rock. We also are rock. the vocal brigades who cancelled Shakespeare. Of course. Yes. He deserves nothing less. <laughs> um, rocking this play belongs to the collective. Um, <laughs> and Shro? Hello, I am Shro. Uh, I played 11 characters. Yeah. Um, yes. you did oh, so yeah. Good. Including both Cena, not the poet, and Cena the poet, uh, okay. and also two of the commoners in that scene. <laughs> and you did also, amazing. Whoever the heck else, I don't know. A- and seven angry people. Um, it was a it was a blast. This is my fir- This is my first um play thing ever here. Um, just, I was just led to this place, and this is amazing. I love it. I love doing play stuff and being dramatic, as you probably could tell. You did excellent. So, so yeah, you were great. Congrats, dude. Thank y'all, well, just... and I hope to do this more in the future, because this was fun. Oh, yeah, you never escaped this. <laughs> You've been in one. You're never going to leave now. It's true. Right? I, I can accept that. Take okay. it from me. You're never allowed to leave. <laughs> never. Um, and to the stone? Um, I played uh, Flavius, first commoner, Masala, and Lucius. Uh, it was really great fun. It was my first um, play at all on here, and it was great fun. Thank you, everyone, for being so welcoming. Of course. Yay. Thank you for sure. Of course. Yeah. It's great. Woo. So many new people. So good. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Good. It's Good great being a new person, as a new yeah. person. <laughs> I sucked in the last day before the play. Yeah. Okay, and um, Cheesable? Uh, hi. Uh, yeah, I mean, I played uh, several roles. Uh, I don't even remember. I, I played M- M- Morales, whatever his name was, and and uh fourth citizen and uh a second soldier uh and and some other stuff not important uh the, i always find these fun the fun domes are very crazy they're great you know that's all i really have to say i'm just here for the fun of it hell yeah yeah hell yeah that's all yeah. any of us are here for that's, that's why true. it's a fun at home oh and i'm cran tonight i was narrating as well as playing a few bit parts i want to say a massive thank you to ray for hosting and for doing some amazing art yeah and the art is so amazing (laughs) it's so good i love it thank you ray thank you to all of you for watching and hanging out with us while we did some fun shakespeare we're going to raid case the explosion if you'd like to join us for that Yes, please do. Oh, but please do. Always good It'll be fun. Does anybody have anything they want to plug before we leave? One very last thing. It's got absolutely jack shit to do with me, but Reporters Without Borders, a French um, non-profit organization, have done something really, really awesome, which they have taken a bunch of censored journalists from a number of countries with like very high censorship press, and they've made a Minecraft server. And there's a link to the website there. They've made a li- they've made a Minecraft server. First of all, it's absolutely beautiful, and second of all, it has a ton of censored articles and a bunch of information about censorship all over the world. And if you do have Minecraft, I really, really recommend checking them out. It's one point fourteen point two or one point fourteen point four. I can't remember exactly, 
but it's a beautiful map. It's an awesome cause, and if you have the opportunity, I highly recommend checking them out. It's absolutely inter- it's fascinating, and it's amazing that people yeah. are doing this. Wow. wow. Absolutely. And it must have taken them so fucking long. Minecraft yeah. books are horrible. They yeah. get like 10 yeah. words on a page and then you have to flip it. And they've done amazing. So, yeah, I highly recommend them. It's, it's very incredible. Awesome. Yeah. It is very cool. I... All right, and before we leave. I do not leave... have anything as sort of like, you know, po- politically interest- interesting to plug, but I think we should probably re- mention that we're doing Serrano next week. Yes. Yes. God willing. Yes. We're doing an official version of the most possibly Thunderdome play ever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, You're it's going to be a amazing. Thunderdome version of one of of a very serious Shakespeare play. Yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. kind of it's gone a bit weird so. right now. It's it's taken a lot of organization to get it going, but we're going to be doing it on April 3rd at 4 p.m. GMT. Yeah. So please be there. Fun. I thought it was fun. Five. I thought it was five. Yeah, it is five p.m. I was wrong. Thank you. Uh, we are arriving. So five p.m. Five p.m. BST. So British time. Mm, time. Yes. Four p.m. GMT because, because daylight savings. Yeah, I was yeah, technically yeah, right. Europeans, you Europeans I was, are about to experience for, what I call your, your hell go weekend. Go forward on Sunday. <laughs> it's time for the time shift. Good luck yeah, with the yeah, food. Sorry, everyone. sorry for y'all. Again. We should get rid of. Here, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a shout out, uh, a shout out for abolishing daylight savings. Um, Excellent yeah. shout out. I support Please. it. <laughs> Please, just do it. Get Sign this petition. We are doing just this in two years. Just <laughs> fucking stop. Yeah. Um, mood. Does, if anyone else has any more shout outs or anything, I do. Ooh. Ooh. Very important. Uh, shout out to our fantastic artist and host Ray Mystic of course Ryan, for this incredible art and always putting up with our shit and just being generally incredible. Ray has been around for like nearly every single Thunderdome to accompanying yeah. it with beautiful art and put up with all of our nonsense. So thank you always because yeah. you're the best. Thank yeah, you so much, Ray. You know how most people are sense. like, most people are like, oh, d- drawing hands is so difficult. And then Ray is here, just like, okay, I'm just gonna draw eight hands today. Yeah, like, like <laughs> what? King behavior. King behavior. That's King. a. Um, other than that, everybody stay safe. It's kind of like a weird time right now, mm. and like things are going and stopping and things are going and stuff is happening but just keep yourself safe and if you need a song to keep in time when you're washing your hands go from the beginning of hit me baby one more time by britney spears to hit me baby one more time and that's 20 seconds comrade britney is supporting us through all of this thank you britney shout out to britney Britney spears yeah (laughs) britney Britney is our queen um stick around make sure you subscribe to the channel we have tons of stuff up and coming because we have nothing else to do uh yeah. <laughs> we've obviously got serrano yeah. we've got something very interesting planned for april that we yeah. can't yeah. disclose yeah. too much information about hmm. but it's but going yeah, to tuned. happen stay tuned for that make sure you subscribe if you haven't follow our twitter there is a link to the Discord in the description. Everybody stay safe. Have a good evening or day or morning or whatever is happening right now. Yeah. Good vibes. Good vibes for everyone. And good also trans rights. Trans, trans rights. Trans rights. Trans rights. Which is what she should say to Casey when we go and raid. Yes, that's our yeah. raid message because we don't have emojis. Trans rights. Trans rights. Trans rights. And now we can raid. Let's go. Let's go. Hey. I'm going to have to dip out of this part. Thanks, okay. y'all. It was awesome Thank to have you. you. This was a sick time. Right, yes. Yeah. And s- next one is Pericles with all roles played by Sid.